got three seniors maybe in your everyday lineup. Brady would be four. That's how do you feel about that dynamic of just having seniors? You hadn't had a lot over the last few years. No, that's the most we've had in quite some time. So, uh, it's, I mean, it's been good. I think it, for the standpoint of uh, just creating harmony on and off the field, I, I think that's that's a big part of it. Uh, the communication that exists off the field from them is 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 big too. So, uh, this is I, this is the most we've had. In, quite some time that I can remember anyway, and uh, it's certainly uh, a luxury for, for a lot of different reasons. There's a lot of coaching that goes on by those guys, and that's important. You've had a lot of pitchers that come in as supposed to be that guy, the highly rated freshman that comes in, Sheffield and Donnie before him and several others who are after him. Kumar may be that guy right now. If you look at rankings, how do you handle the psychology of a guy that's, that's highly touted like that, but you're not going to hand him the ball on day one? I think we do a pretty good job as a group, just uh, kind of controlling the, the thought processes of the, the younger guys coming in. I mean, once they get here, it's it's you know it, it's it's Vanderbilt now. It's the college baseball program. Everything that's been done up until that point really matters nothing. It's really how you function yourself. So uh, I, we've never really had a problem with that. I think you know going back to when we brought those players on board, it's it's kind of business as usual. We've kept everything at the base level and kept their mind uh, pretty even, and uh, they've, they've responded pretty well. On the other side of that, I mean, how beneficial is it to have a guy with that much talent that you don't necessarily have to shoulder with that much respons responsibility right away, given the other talent you have in the rotation? You're, you're talking about entering him right away? Yeah, yeah, I mean, does it make it easier for him that you don't have to, you know, make, make him the number one guy right away when you have so much other talent? That's well, right. I mean, I just think that we've got some older kids with some experience, and, and that's that's important, so those younger kids can learn. And we've never really brought someone in and inserted them right away, unless there was, I guess 12 was the first year that I can really remember where pitchers had to be inserted right away just because of the nature of the roster, but that, that's certainly not the case. But it, listen, if he's good enough, he'll pitch. If he's not, he'll, he'll, he'll pitch when he's ready. That's all there is to it, regardless of who he is and what he is and what people think of him. I think you've got maybe Ethan Paul or Austin Martin at, at short. You've got some options at third, options at second. Stephen Scott can move around. Is there a value to locking in guys? at some point early in the season or in this process, or would you rather have guys floating around a little bit? No, I think stability of infield is important, and we, we would rather get there sooner than later. You know, that, that's not the case right now. So we're, we're still, uh, it's, it's people that are in motion. It's pretty fluid, and uh, we've got a few people at second, a few people at short, a few people at third. And outside of really Julian, I, I can't really tell you that there's someone that, you know, in, in today, if we had to make out a lineup today, we'd make out a lineup. But I, I can't really say with certainty that, that that's going to remain the same. You've uh, often had uh, the number one, two, three ranking, or whatever. What's going into preseason? What has it taught you in the past that you should tell the guys or not tell the guys about what that ranking means or doesn't mean? Uh, it doesn't. So, you know, I, I never even bring it up. Uh, so it doesn't really have any validity. That's someone else's words and work. So uh, as long, I think the last time I ever used a poll was uh, the first year that I was here in 2003 when we stunk and everyone thought we stunk. And then uh, it was a matter of using it as motivation. Now there's, uh, I just don't, don't feel the need to that subject. When you look at Steven Scott and Ethan Paul, two guys that get drafted, decide to come back, what do you think about that decision and what it says about coming back potentially your senior year and how that can benefit you going forward? Well, I, I really think, I look at the individual, I think it really benefit them. I think there's a, a sense of peace when a, a senior comes back to school. I think the toughest years to play at a place like Vanderbilt would be your freshman and junior year. Freshman year because it's new junior year because of that that year that everyone makes a big deal of. And because of it, 
um, there's, a, there's a certain amount of expectation that goes along with it. We certainly don't, but I know it happens. But I think when, once you get to your senior year, it's like, okay, you know, I, I, I'm playing with house money. You know, I just got an opportunity just to grab my degree. Um, I know the lay of the land. I know how to communicate. Coach is going to expect a lot out of me. And uh, I do, uh, but I enjoy them. Without, they're my favorites. I mean, I enjoy seniors. I know that, you know, I, I do. I, I love everything about them because they're, for, for whatever reason, however they made the decision, they're committed to coming back and playing here, and I appreciate that. In addition to that, Coach, um, mm -hmm. how much joy do you take in, in coaching a team like this that's mixed? That you have some of the young guys, but you have those veterans. Is this your favorite type of team to, to coach when you have that balance? No, it does have balance. I mean, you have right through the classes. The, we're, we're, uh, we're not bottom heavy, but we're not top heavy. And I think with the amount of seniors and juniors, it is a, a good sense of guys who had some experience. You can certainly see that in the pitching staff. If there's one area class-wise that depicts who we are, it's, it's certainly the pitching staff. Because from senior to freshman, we've got, we've got a nice balance of kids. But I, I think it, it is enjoyable because uh, with that older group, it certainly helps us with the younger guys. There's there's a lot of communication that takes place, which we really enjoy from a coaching standpoint, for those players to be able to communicate thoughts to them, and that's uh, it is it is taken well. What does that look like from the seniors? I mean, as, as you say, control the talk and the environment when they're away from the field house. Well, I, I you know I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think because they've been around, they. Uh, they, they understand the organization, they understand the standards and values and the expectations, and they have a, a greater sense of, of what's expected away from the field. So I think conversations that tend to go in a negative direction, they have a way of ceasing. Uh, if they don't, your foundation is gonna, is gonna be broken. But those older players usually as much contact as they can have with the freshmen because obviously on campus our freshmen live away so it's tough to, to mingle together all the time but now since we're over the first term uh, there, there's a lot of teamsmanship going on um, they're, they're spending a lot of hours here because they can but away from the field I, I would I would figure that they're they're together and the fact that those seniors can spend time with them and communicate with them and take care of them is good. I, I look at the fall and everyone says, how's your, how's your, how was your fall? Everyone says good because you know you have really nothing to, to compare it to. But my way of looking at it is athletically, academically, and socially. And if those three areas are consistent, then you probably had a good fall. Academically, we were very good. Socially, we were good. Stayed out of trouble. Um, no no poor decisions. Um, and then athletically, I mean, we were fine. We, we, did, we did what we needed to do on the field. What are you gonna be looking for out of Jason Gonzalez this year as he kind of takes the next step forward in his development? Just for him to get better. That's it, simple as that. Be, just, just get better. Uh, that's all he can control. And you know, whether he plays or doesn't play, if he, if he gets better, then he's gonna find himself, you know, make me pick up the pen and write his name in the line. That's really all he needs to do is just get better. It's so key to have that middle infield figured out. What are you, what are you looking to see that you said this works with those two guys? Stability and consistency. It's just the ability to, to contain the baseball and catch it. I think before you can throw it, you have to catch it. And the one thing that you saw was, you know, you had a kid last year that caught everything. No one's hit to him. It was, it was almost like you were going six three on the scorebook before you even looked up because you just assumed that he was going to make the play and you're not going to you're not going to get kids like that every year but at the same time if you get consistent players who just catch the ball and can redirect it with body control then that that's really what our what our goal is and do it on a consistent basis and that's really all we're looking for so is it as short as that ethan or austin is that the only two yeah well you've got those two you've got you know, jason gonzalez you got harry ray you've got sterling hayes so there, there's a lot of pieces. You bring back your entire weekend rotation this year. Are you anticipating any changes to rotation of Ravy, Fellows, and Hickman? I don't know if that's our rotation. You know, that, 
that's those were the three last year, but last year. So I, I don't know. We'll, we'll put the the best five guys out there in week one uh, because that will that will be the amount of games. But you know, in the first game, we'll whoever is the most consistent person. And uh, you know, Drake's been consistent. Ravy's been consistent. Uh, Hickman was a young kid, but he pitched well in spots. But we'll just have to see. There, there's there's a lot of competition right there right now. So you don't, in terms of like a quarterback, you don't, with a starting pitcher, you don't believe it's a position to lose, so to speak, a position to lose or a position to gain. Do you believe in that? No, not really. I, I mean, I think the same thing. I mean, we're, we rent positions here. And you, you just have to, you have to pay your rent every month. Uh, just that, that's how you get on the field. There's no expectation of, okay, this happened before, so I, I MLB four event as an opportunity to prepare the team for tournament environments later in the season. I guess it could, because since we've never played in it before, I, I just not sure what to expect. But I, I like the fact that it's good competition, from from what I understand, and uh, you know, it's just good to go on the road and play someone else and take the entire team with us. There's no roster limit, so that that makes it from from a coaching perspective, it's it's good to. Include everyone. That's important.